This is going to be a brief training on the operation of Active 911 in the iPads in the truck. And at the end of it, I'll talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we've encountered with it uh, and some of the troubleshooting you can go through. I would recommend that you keep the Active 911 application open on the iPad. It will not receive alarms unless that application is open and running. It will kind of cue them in the background, but if you get a call and you walk into the truck and you launch that application, it may take 30 seconds or so for all the calls that have happened since the application was last run to load in. If you leave it running all the time, they'll come in more or less in real time uh, as that application loads. So it'll be a little bit easier for you. When the application is launched on the left-hand side, what you see here is a list of all of the active alarms that have happened uh, in Golden uh, since the application deleted uh, them the last time around. So when you get a call uh, from the time dispatch dispatches the call to the time it shows up in here uh, is typically about 30 seconds. I found most of the time the call will show up in Active 911 while she is still paging out the call. Uh, once you see it on the I am responding screen in the station, that means it's been sent out by CAD and it should also be in Active 911. So you'll see that call show up on the left hand side of the screen. It'll give you a brief indication of what it was. The top one here says fire alarm activation and then it shows you the address. So you'll know right away whether that was the call that just got toned out. And then in blue letters next to that, it's going to show you how many minutes ago that call was toned out. So it'll give you a real quick visual idea as to if that's the call you're interested in. If you want to get yourself mapped to that, simply click on that call. It's now going to load it on the right-hand side of the screen. You've got your address at the top, 816 Brown Squirrel Lane. You've got a number of buttons, respond, arrive, cancel, available, unavailable. And then underneath that, the details of the call. What we're interested in is the address, the cross street is typed into CAD, and then the map page. So you can still pull up the map page because this does not have hydrant information in it yet. And then if CAD, the dispatcher, has typed in any kind of narrative, uh, that will show up in the note box below. This will vary call to call, and it is simply what the dispatcher types in um, if there's any notes that they've put in there. can be very useful for us. Uh, sometimes there's nothing in there at all. Two things you want to do on this page. Uh, first one, if you're responding in an engine, click the respond button. You'll hit it. It'll sit there for a moment, and as soon as it updates uh, the server, that button will turn blue. What that's going to do is put your engine on the map so that other engines can see where you are in real time as you drive around the city. So there you see it just changed blue. So that now means that this iPad has been attached to that call. It simply shows this to the other iPads. It doesn't log it in I am responding or anywhere else. It just puts your engine on the map so that you can see where you are and where other engines are. To get yourself mapped to it, touch the address. That's going to bring up Google Maps. It's going to show you where you are, whether you're at Station 1, Station 4, or driving around, and it's going to show you the destination of the call, and it's going to use basic Google Maps to map you there. If Google Maps doesn't know how to get there, this isn't going to know how to get there. So it will just show you the destination, but it won't actually map you to it. We've also noticed there are some inaccuracies in Google Maps, one of them being the Fossil Trace Golf Course uh, building. If you get called there, it believes that building is in the center of the golf course and it maps you some weird way. So knowing your district is still important. But it will show you how to get there. Much like any other iPad app, you can pinch to zoom in and zoom out. If you want to see what this looks like from a satellite view, the double arrow button down here at the bottom will simply change your view. And now you can look at it satellite versus just your standard uh, mapping. There's a reroute button. If you get off this, if you decide to go a different way, you're not going to take 6th Avenue. You're going to go a different route. You can hit the reroute, and it will then re-navigate you uh, to that. To get back to the screen you were on previously, the fire alarm activation, the call type up here, hit that. It will bring you back to your main screen there. From that point, we can go and look at any type of call that we want to see and bring up that basic mapping. Some of the other features on this map is we have the ability to put in call notes uh, and various things on here. So let me zoom in on the School of Mines, for example. And we notice right next to Brown Hall, there's a little green uh, icon. If I touch that icon, it's going to tell me that's Brown Hall, and it's got some notes that we've typed in here. The FDC is located at 16th and Illinois. We've got the ability to put notes for any type of building in there. Uh, all of our schools are marked. 
uh, all the fire stations are marked, all the AMR uh, facilities are marked, and then certain buildings on the CSM campus. We're also getting into the habit of beginning to mark turnarounds on the highway. Notice right here you see a red flag on 6th Avenue. That is an area where we can turn a rig around. So if you're heading out to a call on one of the highways and you want to know, hey, is there a turnaround? I'm trying to get in the habit of marking the usable turnarounds like we see here where you can find a place to spin that rig around. So if you've gotten any ideas there or you notice any inaccuracies, let me know. Uh, we can submit some changes to Google Maps and we can put any kind of these points of interest on any of these units for us to use. Some of the caveats of this. The address is only as good as what is entered into CAD. So, for example, I'm going to pull up a Canyon call. It was typed into CAD as CCC at 261. We know that to mean Clear Creek Canyon at mile marker 261. Google Maps doesn't have the foggiest idea where that is. So when we click on it, it's going to put it in downtown Golden. And that is kind of what Google Maps default is. If it doesn't know where the address is, it knows our fire department is in Golden. So it's just going to give us downtown Golden. So sometimes we'll see calls pop up and basically it's just off Washington Street downtown. And we say, that's not right. Well, that's because CAD doesn't know the exact address. So Google Maps doesn't know the exact address. Some of the other issues we've seen with that is sometimes the dispatcher, instead of typing in address, might type in the type of the... Uh, of the, the building it is. I've seen King Supers entered as an address. Well, we know where King Supers is, but when we ask Google Maps to find King Supers, it doesn't know the address of King Supers. So it might, again, place you in the middle of downtown Golden instead of at the actual King Supers. This is because the information coming from CAD uh, is not enough for Google Maps to pull it up. It's only as accurate as what that dispatcher types in. So it's not a replacement for the map book. Uh, remember that you can always, on any call you pull up, find the map page and use that. At some point, we will be able to upload hydrants to this, but until then, you've got to refer back to that map page for fire alarm calls to know where those hydrants are uh, around that particular call. Some of the other issues we've noticed, um, back to troubleshooting, is the iPads have a tendency, when they've been left on for long periods of time, to just simply lose all internet connectivity. So you'll come into the rig after a call and there will not be any recent calls listed here in the list. Uh, and nothing is downloading when you launch the application because it's lost connectivity. I don't know why this is, but iPads every couple days just seem to lose it. So we found that one of the solutions to this is, and I'd recommend when you start your shift in the morning or in the evening, reboot that iPad completely and let it come totally back up again. Hold down the power button and the home button and just keep holding it and holding it and holding it. You'll see the switch to unlock and keep holding it past that screen. And once you see the white apple appear back on the screen, release both your fingers. That's a complete reboot for this. And when it comes back up, uh, you should have data connectivity. We also recommend that we don't have it connect via Wi-Fi. Both station one and station four have Wi-Fi available for these, but we've seen that as you pull out of the station, the iPad has a very hard time letting go of the Wi-Fi that it was on and connecting to the cellular network in Golden. That sometimes takes a minute. Well, that's not really usable for us when we're trying to use this for GPS mapping. So the recommendation is don't attach to Wi-Fi access points. Keep it on 4G data all the time so that way it doesn't have to reacquire as you pull out of the station. If you've got any issues or questions with it, you know how to get a hold of me. Again, it's a work in progress. These guys are constantly improving it, so we'll see things work uh, from time to time and then stop working. Um, so if you see strange behavior, let me know, but that is a real quick way as to how this thing works. Uh, I'd come back to this screen when you're done with a call. Um, you'll notice at the very top of this, we've got Golden FD, and then above that, American Medical Responses in the rigs. We do have the ability to watch AMR calls as well. So when they have an AMR only call, it will show up in a separate area because we weren't toned to it. I added them to all the rigs so that if you want to add yourself to an AMR call, you've still got all the mapping information uh, and the address of that call. So you'll see it listed in a separate area on the iPad if we were not initially toned on that call. Uh, so that's why there are two of those. So. Um, other than that, I think that will get you through how to operate this and how to troubleshoot this.